Do you want better relationships? Find yourself having difficult people in your life, whether that's a partner, a family member, a coworker. How do we create a change in the system that doesn't keep us stuck? Wow. Difficult relationships, difficult, complicated connections are also a huge mirror of where we need to do our own spiritual healing, our own growth, our own development, and our own work to help really train our ego intellect, that protective part to come to present so that we don't keep repeating the same patterns or living in the past, changing our emotional narrative of how we interact and how we connect in just any type of relationship. So today in this video, I'm gonna share with you how we can use difficult relationships first as a conduit for healing, how we can use it for our own spiritual, emotional development, and how in doing this work, we can create a change in the system that heals ourselves, that then heals our relationships. So first, let's just talk about a difficult relationship. You know, I can even think of a client of mine where she was having a lot of issues with her best friend. She called me, we're mentoring. She's like, I keep getting into this push and pull and I'm so sick of it. How do I get her to change? How do we finally change this dynamic in our relationship? Pause, first and foremost. When we find ourselves confronted in difficult situations, our first reaction often is to blame the other. Now, blame gets us nowhere. So this is where we can even just start to pause, take a moment, and start to anger into our spirit, to our higher self that is not connected to our human parts that can actually lean in with curiosity, compassion, understanding for ourselves and for others. Uh, let me also, before I go any further, hi, I'm Sonia. I'm a fourth generation intuitive and I teach you how to plug back into your innate divine GPS, your intuition. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that little bell notification because I release videos every week. If you're returning, welcome back. And also I'm so excited because in March, I believe 21st, uh, speaking of relationships, I'm going to be teaching a, a guide's workshop on how to communicate and connect with your spirit guides, which is just another way and a different form of relationships. So I hope to see you there. Check out the description box below for other tools and resources to help you along your way. So back to my client, where she was trying to change her friend and found herself again in this vortex of trying to control the situation of getting stuck in old stuff. So first pause, when we can lean into our spirit, first leaning in with curiosity, compassion, we can actually change and actually move ourselves into an observer position. When I have these strong emotional reactions, this points us to where we are triggered. Now triggers are places, our emotional wounds, often that come from our upbringing, that we see mirrored in our relationships. Relationships in a lot of ways is like soul school. And where we get triggered is very good information on where we need to do our own growth, our own healing, and our own connection. So just take a moment in your, take a moment, think about where are you triggered? Who do you get most triggered with? I can, I know that often it can be, especially in family dynamics where those triggers were first formed and reinforced. So when we're triggered, this means that our emotional reaction is greater than what the situation calls for. For example, with my client, her friend wasn't able to hang out and instead of being disappointed, which is a mild emotion, it kicked up all of these triggers that really gave these stories around being abandoned, around being alone, around not caring about being judged, all of these old things that is part of her own interpersonal work and healing her relationship with herself, with her ego, with her narrative, so that we can change how we interact with the past to move differently into the future. So like I said, when we are triggered, it is our ego that tries to defend and protect us against harm. Now, the ego pulls from the past and projects into the future and makes sense of the world in stories. Stories like the ones that I just said, I'm not good enough, I am judged, I'm criticized, I'm not safe, I'm abandoned, I am not alone, I'm not important. Our ego gets informed from a place of our upbringing. And so when we get triggered, when a relationship, when a conversation hits on that pain point, it's natural reaction 
And it is like a knee jerk reaction. I know that for myself, when I get triggered, it could be like a knee jerk reaction is a place that our, our little human parts are trying to defend us against threats. Now, these threats are in present time. These are threats that were from long ago that get filtered through this lens. So you get triggered by a car, I'm not available to hang out. Ego filters that through the lens of this story, this narrative, I'm not important. And so then goes up, that gets critical as a way to try and blame, judge, shame ourselves, others, as a way to protect our heart space. So when we are even paying attention to being triggered, this is where we can even lean in with curiosity and compassion. This is where we can start to anchor into our own spirit, our own higher self that can see that our human parts are really just trying their best. And, but also that doesn't mean that we have to be hijacked from our choices. Okay. Because a big thing about relationship is that we have choice on how we interact with the system. So as you start to pay attention, what are your triggers? What are, is this old pain that starts to show up? Usually when we're triggered, what happens is oh, we stop breathing, our shoulders get tense, our whole body gets tense, we get into fight or flight, we start shooting from the hip, we don't often have a filter or control. So first and foremost, let's start to practice being mindfully aware, starting to be aware of our bodies, aware of our emotions, aware of present time that can help us ground. Our meditation practices, ways of anchoring into our spirit, of being mindful throughout our day and in our life can help us give sips of space so that we don't fall into that same routine. So first, you're triggered. Very first thing that we're going to do is take a breath. Notice when we get triggered, often we breathe into our shoulders like this. We choke ourselves off. We get out of our bodies. We we are in a very hyper aroused state that doesn't give us access to the present moment, to who's in front of us, or even what our North Star is for our conversation. What do we wish to would happen? What do we want the resolution to be? Instead, it goes into blame, shame, overthinking. So first, take a breath and breathe in through your nose and let your rib cage expand from east to west. And as we just yeah is always a really good practice to bring us back to home, number one. It can be really key to practice this breathing in our day-to-day -day life because when we start to breathe more deeply, breathing into our belly button, breathing into our rib cage, this is a new way, a new conscious way of actually starting to invite the spirit in. When we have no air, when breath leaves our body, our spirit is out. And when we get into fight or flight, we actually don't allow our spirit. We're just in our head. So that very simple tool, take a breath, can help immensely as a way to pause. Second, as we're starting to pay attention, we can even notice being in, anchoring into even our spirit of just observing our ego without judgment. We can just acknowledge and see what our story is. And when we can pay attention to what the story is, we can now start to mindfully use that as a way to rewire. I mean, we're never not going to be triggered. It will happen, but it's all about the intensity and also just where we have more choice. Triggered art. We breathe deeply. Second, being in the place of the observer. A simple tool that I always love, hand on my heart, hand on my belly, just as a way to anchor back into home number one, as a way of support, and also just as a way to start to shift the energy instead of being in the story. If you're really triggered, another really important tool that I use all the time is that I say that I need a timeout. I'll take a breath and I'll say, I need three minutes of silence and setting my timer and I will be back follow through on that, giving yourself a moment to pause, to re-regulate that gives us more choice. As we are aware in this observer state of the story that goes, it allows us to witness, reflect, and better understand. Seeing that ego story anchoring into even our own spirit, our higher self, we can even extend grace and compassion to those parts that didn't get seen or witnessed as a kid. 
And when we can start to change the narrative, start to change our relationship from past, that's where we can be present and start to even have a different relationship with our future. So be in the observer. This takes practice. Let yourself be messy. <laughs> Let yourself be messy. We are talking about emotional triggers. This can feel like a, a, a hairpin, right? So as we move into that observer state, it's, it's allowing us to watch. I'm watching the energy. I'm watching my own energy. I'm curious and available. Three, this is most important when we're triggered, be kind and compassionate with yourself. This is a pain point. This is a place where we've been hurt and where we can be critical or judge or harsh or that is another way that our ego intellect is trying to make sense of the past. And this is also where we can start to anchor into our feeling body. We notice my trigger, I notice what's going on. I'm gonna even just start to pay attention to some of these sensations in my body and be curious what they mean. Is it sadness? Is it disappointment? Is it anger? Is it grief? The more that we can befriend our emotions that come in as visitors, they tell us what we value and what's important to us. We can't think our feelings. We have to feel our feelings, which means that we have to be in home number one, our physical bodies, where our emotions talk to us. So as we are starting to be kind, to be self-compassionate, to be aware, to be loving towards ourselves, this can also allow us to witness the places where we've been hurt. Right? And then we can also make the decision of what is the new action. Now, I'm aware of my trigger. <laughs> I'm triggered, taking a breath. I can notice. I'm noticing the story. I'm going to journal about my trigger, where it came from, sitting with my emotions. And then we can even take a pause of making new decisions. Right? What is a decision? So I can even think, you know, my client, for myself, a big trigger that I often have for myself is that I have to do things by myself. So sometimes my little ego barking dog doesn't like to ask for help. And then an overwhelm will can get triggered saying that this always happens. I'm so stressed. I'm all by myself. No one's going to help me, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, that's a trigger. Take a breath, start to check in. Where does that come from? Is that true? According to my lived experiences? No. That's not, that's my little old ego defending story that's trying to protect me from hurt, from judgment, from being out. So I can say, oh, wow, compassion, good job. You're trying really, really hard. Let's try something new. And that's where we can start to use our intuition to be clear, what is a new decision that I need to make? So for example, even in my example around doing things by myself, that means that in a new action to set up my relationship for success, I need to communicate directly what my needs are, what my boundaries are, what these things are, and then also practice self-soothing. This is where we can connect to our spirits, so soothe ourselves, be kind, compassionate, loving, just, you know, it's okay. Move our energy, move the body, journal, empty it. All of these ways to start to move the energy from getting stuck in here, moving forward. Now, like I said, having that compassion, having that these new decisions is how making decisions, concrete decisions. And if you're really dealing with somebody who's very difficult, who's very much in their own ego, that really like can just, it's like a dog fight. Another question that I always like to ask as well is what is the North Star of your conversation? What would you like the resolution to be? What would you like somebody to understand? One of my favorite things that I've learned from John Gottman, who's one of the foundational relationship experts in intimate relationships, but he said that 70% of arguments are not going to be resolved. So what we can really aim for is understanding. How can I understand myself? How can I understand the other? And it was somebody who's challenging. What do I want them to understand? And what would I like the solution to be? So for example, with my own trigger, I had to communicate to my partner that I need help. And so I gave him some clear directions. I would love for him to go grocery shopping, pick up the water. And um, I think it was like one other thing to do the laundry on Sundays. Those are my three actions as my North Star. That is what I need. And also if he's too busy to communicate that to me in real time, another place where I can get triggered. 
So in being able to create a dynamic, having new actions, new ways is how we can change our relationship for the better. Healing ourselves, healing our own wounds, healing some of these even old emotional karmic imprints so that we can have better spiritual growth, so we can have better perspective, so we can have better clarity instead of letting old traumas inform the future, which, you know, big triggers. I can't, I can't rely on anybody. I can't open my heart. I can't trust anybody and all, all of it. Remember, this is just an old story that we can use to change what our narrative is about, about being in relationship that helps us heal, that changes how we interact within a system. So I hope that you found this video helpful. I feel like if you did, let me know, leave me a comment. And you know, if you'd like to work together, definitely head to my site, check out my workshop. I'm so excited. I do intuitive readings, mentoring, and I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a line. Hello at sonytilly.com. I would love to be in touch. So I'm sending you all my love and I'll see you next week. Bye.